great. Right. Nice to meet you. My name is Laura Zervis. I'm a registered dietitian and licensed nutritionist. I um, have a private practice and I work with people to either, I would say half of my practice is helping them manage their weight and the other half of my practice is helping people uh, manage their nutrition um, so they could either delay chronic disease or manage the symptoms of chronic disease, um, you know, anything like that. Um, okay. Today we're going to be talking about smoothies and during our last class, I don't know that you were able to join us, but what we talked about was coping with taste changes while you may be going through treatments and how, um, you know, maybe our food needs to be more colorful or sometimes food that is chilled um, and making our foods more nutrient dense. So, you know, we could get the most calories in and something acceptable us, to us. And we talked about some different recipes and we used um, some juices in those recipes and we um, made some meals that didn't include meat. So, um, you know, we could still get our protein, but they, they didn't affect um, any, they didn't interfere with any of the taste changes that we were dealing with. Today, we're going to be making smoothies. And the great things about smoothies is they check all the boxes because we could make them high protein. We could add a lot of vegetables to them. We could add so many different things. We can sip on them, you know, all day long. Um, you know, we could just, you know, sometimes a straw will make that nice. You could just sip on them. They're colorful. They can be colorful. And we'll talk about ways to do that. So they are appetizing, um, you know, and then they can be, you know, we could use whatever fruit you have on hand, whatever vegetables you have on hand. Um, so, and they could be an excellent source of protein. You could add nut butters, you could add cottage cheese, you could add yogurt, um, depending on the type of milk that you could use, you could add, you know, more protein as well. Uh, we could add half healthy fats to them. Adding an avocado, believe it or not, to our smoothie really makes it like a rich, almost milkshake texture. Um, we're adding a lot of good, healthy fats, peanut butter, almond butter, all of those are good to add because they really add to the caloric content and that really helps keep us full longer and it does help uh, It does help with nausea. So those are some really good things that we could add to our smoothies as well. Um, you know, they could help us in, um, increase our vegetable intake. We could, you could add kale or spinach to them with really out inter without interfering with the taste. Those things, kale was going to add a little bit more flavor, but um, spinach doesn't add much flavor at all. And it just adds a lot of nutrition. So it's an excellent way to get in some fruits and vegetables at a time you might not be able to do that. Um, it's also good because it helps us with our fluid intake, because after all, it still counts as another fluid that we're getting and to keep us hydrated. Um, it could be difficult to drink the amount of water that you have to um, have. Um, you know, and along with the, I said, the spinach or the kale, you could add bananas, blueberries, raspberries, mangoes. Um, I have some with dates here today. We're gonna do pumpkin, pineapple. There's so many things that you could add. And again, all of these things too, you could either buy them frozen in the store, which sometimes it's economical to do that. You could buy them when they're in season and freeze them if you like. Um, so you always have them on hand. Most of those that I named all freeze well, strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, mangoes, pineapple, all that freezes well. Um, so it's just a nice way to do it. Even our avocado can be frozen too. So what just about bananas, is it better to freeze banana before you? Use I think it? so. I think so. And I like doing that because when you add, when you're not using ice, when you're using a frozen banana, um, I always use the frozen banana because one, it makes it a little bit thicker and two, it's cold without diluting it. Sometimes ice will just dilute it and make it, um, thin and watery. Oh. So I always think it's best to use a frozen fruit and banana is wonderful. And um, I have some frozen bananas that we're gonna use today too. Um, and the other thing is that, you know, since they are so easy to make, there's something that can be made very quickly on days where maybe you have low energy um, so that you could have something that's really um, nutritious for yourself that doesn't take a long time to make. Um, so the basic formula is usually, depend if it for one serving, you're usually looking at a cup of fluid, um, milk today I have we're get, I have almond milk. You could use regular milk. Um, if regular milk, if you're having any problem with mucus, um, you know you might want to avoid regular milk for the time. Cow's milk um, and I go usually with, use skim milk. Skim is fine. Skim milk all the time. Skim is perfect. Um, good source of calcium. If you do end up using any of these. Um, uh, 
nut milks like oat, silk, I mean, oak, co oat, coconut, or almond. Make sure that you always check out the calcium. Um, a lot of the store brands <clears throat> are also have the amount of calcium that the name brands do, but, some, but not all do. So um, it's a really great way to get your calcium. They have about the same as milk, around 450 milligrams. So it's an excellent way to get your calcium in there too. Um, so anyhow, make sure that your liquid, you know, you don't want to use any kind of carbonated liquid and you do not want to use anything that has caffeine. You can use water, but again, if you're trying to increase calories, um, it's just going to make your, um, shake or your, or your smoothie just a little bit thin and it's not going to add much flavor. So I always like to add, um, one of these unsweetened milks and like your skim milk is a good choice. These almond milks and the coconut milks, I get the unsweetened version. So I'm not any, any extra sugar. Um, and what's the brand, what's the brand name that you recommend of the almond milk? Uh, they're all good. Uh, I'll tell you which ones that I think that are, that are created equal. I think, um, um, this blue diamond is good. I believe the silk brand is good. Also, the local store brands that we have here, Target and Giant Eagle, also have excellent brands with the same nutritional content. So okay. I like all of those. I could vouch okay. for those ones for sure. Um, not all store brands are created equal. So you have to check. And like I said, this one has, I want to say, 425, 450 milligrams of calcium, which is very important. So I think that's an excellent way to um, get your calcium as well. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and then let's see. You know, I just wanted to say one thing. Um, okay. I, I'm having surgery tomorrow and I've been having to drink these high protein drinks that they gave me twice a day. Okay. Um, and they're, they're kind of thick. So I added a little bit of coffee to it this morning. Okay. <laughs> and it actually made it much more palatable because you mentioned not using coffee. Yeah. Um, but I just put like, you know, not even a quarter of a cup of coffee and not even that much um, and some cinnamon good. and you know it seemed to make it a little better so okay so is too thick sometimes a problem for you yeah okay yeah, yeah. then you may want I was putting an ice cube in it to water it down a little bit yes um because it wasn't it wasn't like a thick milkshake thick it was just kind of a disgusting thick <laughs> so really oh yeah that's not good so I used the coffee, I used an ice cube, um, and I did put some cinnamon in this morning, which helped a little bit. So. Excellent. That's a good, we're going to get more talk about that too. I think that's a really good idea. Um, I have today, I have um, ginger for one of the recipes. Um, I have cinnamon. Um, what else? Nutmeg is also good because I, I have one that we're going to do that has pumpkin in it. So yeah, I think that's a great idea. And also when you mentioned the one about coffee too, <clears throat> about adding coffee, I think it's okay to thin it, but you might not want to use it um, for your whole one. It just because it could decrease your appetite in the long, you know, in the long run, if you just fill, if you keep having the caffeine, it could um, decrease your appetite. But otherwise, mm -hmm. I think, you know, if that's not an issue right now, I think that's fine to add it, especially if you drink it because it has the coffee, it has changed the taste a little bit. Right. So was, was the coffee just to change the taste or just to make it thinner? Both. Both. Okay, good. Both. It, it, um, I only drink like maybe a half a cup of coffee a day. That's it. Because okay. um, I have AFib, intermittent AFib, and the, the caffeine in the coffee sometimes right. raises my heart rate a little bit. So I okay. only drink a little bit of coffee in the morning. So instead of drinking it, I just put some of it into my, right. into my high protein drink. So. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Um, and like I said, for the protein source, you could always try um, nut butters. I have peanut butter today, almond butter. I also have this, um, it's called PB2, and it is a powdered protein, um, a powdered peanut butter. And it's really nice because if you are watching your fat, or if you're worried about having too much fat, um, you know, a, a tablespoon, two tablespoons, you know, equal portions here. Um, this regular peanut butter has 190 calories and 16 grams of fat. Um, the protein is different by one gram. Um, this for two tablespoons of this, it only has 60 calories. So like one third of the calories of peanut butter 
And it also had only one and a half grams of fat versus 16. So, and a lot less saturated fat too. So that's always a good option. Um, I don't know how acceptable it is to, you know, you can also just add two tablespoons of um, water, I believe to two tablespoons of the powder and mix it up and make your, you know, just like a little bit of peanut butter for you. But I think it's best just to add the powder to our shake um, and do it that way and just let it, you know, just get, get the flavor in there. Is that, um, a grocery, is that a grocery store item? Yep. Yes. Okay. Yes. You could find it at all the local grocery stores and even like Target and Walmart all carry this. So okay. it's nice. It's inexpensive. Um, it's a nice little product. It's shelf stable. And if you look at the ingredients, it is just roasted peanuts, sugar, and salt. But again, only two grams of sugar for two tablespoons. And our other one has four. It's not bad, not a, not a big difference. And only 90 milligrams of sodium. So not a high sodium product either. So, okay. yep, so that's very nice. Okay, and then you could also use yogurt and I have my yogurt here somewhere. And I like this Greek yogurt because it's very high in protein for three quarters of cup, three quarter a cup, you get 17 grams. Um, and it's unsweetened, you know, just, um, it has a few natural sugars in it, 17 grams of protein, um, depending on, I like the 2%, um, you could use 0% and you could also use 5%, just depending where you are on, you know, where you want to be with your fat. If you need to add- Is that some, a vanilla, vanilla flavor? This is uh, unflavored. It has no oh, okay. flavor at all. So okay. it's just a, a plain yogurt. You can get vanilla if you like that. I think that's, there's nothing wrong with that. That's fine too. Um, but again, you just want to watch if you, if that is a concern of yours and you're trying to see how much sugar you get, I think it, you might want to, you know, just try either one of them. Um, let's see. And then you could also try cottage cheese. Cottage cheese also packs about 20 grams of protein. That's uh, high in sodium though. It can be high in sodium. You're correct. Yeah, yeah there I, are was, I was really surprised. One day I looked at the label and I said, oh my God, that's a lot right. of sodium. Yeah. Um, I never realized cottage cheese was so high in sodium. Right. Right. And milk, some milk products too. Um, and so what, and, and tofu, if you're, if you wanted to stay plant-based, you could certainly use tofu that mixes up really well in a blender. Um, and as far as spices, yeah, I talked about adding, you could add fresh ginger, you could add, um, you could add, um, ginger out of a, you know, a jar this, I have nutmeg today as well. And cinnamon, all very nice. And those kind of things, uh, stimulate our appetite too, um, with the taste and with the smell. So I think that's always a good idea. And just a few tips you always want to, um, when we're making our shake, I don't know if you have a blender at home, you know, what kind of blender you have. Mine have happens. a super duper blender. <laughs> Do you? That's fantastic. It crushes ice. It does everything. My son bought it for me maybe five, 10 years ago, and I haven't used it that much, to, except I made margaritas with it. Oh, very so, nice. So now I can't drink alcohol. So um, yes. I drug it out the other day and I haven't used it forever, but it... It's super powerful. <laughs> It'll do everything. Fantastic. Well, I'm glad you just got it out. Um, does it have just, does it have the the, the um, large pitcher or does it have some cups too? I'll, I'll show you. Okay. My bananas while you're doing that. This is a container. Oh, nice. I love that. That does look very heavy duty. Yeah, it is. This is very heavy, so. That's great. That's great. All right. So the first one that we're going to make is a cream, uh, is a peanut butter banana smoothie. Let me just pull that up here. All right. So what we're going to do is, and I have some, I have that that like what you have, mine's plastic, it's not glass. And then I also have some cups that go right on the blender as well. So let me just grab my blade and I have everything. So the blade just goes in here. So for this one, we're going to add, you could almond milk, but you could, again, you could use skim milk. You could add cook, whatever, whatever you like. And of course you could always use water as well. So let me just get a cup of that. And I've also, um, I have it marked on my, blender cup where like a cup of milk is it's so I don't have to measure every time I put it in one time and it's somewhere like the top of my hands and your your nice one that you have probably has the markings on it too where a cup is 
Yeah, it does. What yeah, um, you said the almond milk you can get it without sugar. Is that what you said? Yes. Does it have artificial sweetener in it? No, no, it does not. No, it does not. I know my um, my daughter in law used to drink almond milk, and uh, it actually tastes really good. But it is, it I does. Little... There is no artificial. There's no artificial sweeteners in here at all, and there's zero grams of sugar. And. Okay. Uh, no added sugar. Now, there are some that are sweetened. I always like to buy the unsweetened. They're only 30 calories per cup. Um, purified water, almonds, calcium carbonate, sea salt, potassium, sunflower, lecithin, just some things to give it a little bit thicker and then some additional vitamins. But, um, and it just says, can the, it just contains almonds too. So, of course. All right, so I'm just gonna put this in my cup here. And I'm going to add my frozen banana. And I like to just, <clears throat> excuse me, just keep them in a bag in the freezer. Do you put them in peeled or unpeeled? Does it matter? Peeled. Peeled okay. and in like a good portion. Like I'll cut them in thirds, depending how big my banana is, a third or a half. Okay. Um, yeah, and I'll put that in. And this one, I am going to use the peanut butter powder. I'm going to use two tablespoons of peanut butter powder. Just put that in there. And I'm also going to use my Greek yogurt in this one. And where's my little cup? <clears throat> Just a quarter cup. How much of the peanut butter powder did you put in there? Two tablespoons. Two tablespoons, okay. Mm -hmm. And I just did the Greek yogurt and we'll put the lid on and we'll see. And you could always play with it too. You could do less yogurt if you, if you think you want it to be thinner. I'm just gonna blend here for one second. And I think that peanut butter gives it a really good smell. You get that nice peanut butter smell to it. And again, this one isn't super thick. Oh Actually, yeah, I'd say. Yeah, it's coming out nice. So you may want to, um, you know, if, if that's the perfect consistency, I would leave it there. If you need a little bit more, I would add um, either another banana or a little bit more yogurt. But I think that's probably pretty good right with that. It, it smells good, it looks good. And this one, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, so we just see my glass is a little bit tinted, but mm -hmm. it's like a beige color, like the peanut butter. And I'm going to add some spinach to it too. Now that we'll just Ooh. see what that looks like. I have a cup of spinach. Does that change the taste much? Nope. Really? Re really. The thing that, I, like I said before, the kale will change the taste. Um, almost like a little bit, you know, that taste of kale, like, because it's in that cabbage family. Yeah, I'm not crazy about kale. <laughs> right. And I do like kale, but not necessarily, I sometimes I like to have these in the morning and I really don't want that kale cabbage -y kind of taste in the morning, but um, spinach does not do anything, but I wanted to show you what spinach does to the color. Okay. Sometimes it um, just doesn't make the color as. Sometimes it makes it brown, but actually it made it like a nice Oh yeah, brown. I see, yeah. Yeah, this is a nice pretty green. So uh, actually it's really nice. I'll pour it in glass so you can see. And like I said, my glass is tinted, but. Um, okay. A nice green color like a like a celery color so what spinach have a lot of protein in it no protein but iron um the b vitamin oh. um fiber that you're not and that's the thing a lot of um times people sorry i just wanted to rinse my cup uh a lot of times you know you hear oh you're better off having the fruit instead of the instead of the juice right because of the fiber so you're getting all the fiber you're not that's the beautiful thing about making a smoothie everything that you put in is still in there um it's not okay. been processed or anything so you are getting the fiber you're getting all the b vitamins you're getting iron you're getting folic acid so plus you know we're always trying to get that five servings of fruit and vegetables a day so i had my half a banana which is one and i had my spinach which is two so there goes two and that's only you know in the morning if, if that's when you're having yours or if you're having it at lunch there goes two servings um towards your five for the day so i think that's just a great way to get them in um 
and it's easy to drink. So it really doesn't, we still have that same amount of liquid. So whatever we put in there is just, it's just going to make it nicer for us. It's, um, you know, it's all contained in that one glass. Um, the second one I'm going to make is a chocolate avocado smoothie. Um, I'm going to use almond milk again. There's my cup. So almond milk has more um, nutrition to it than regular milk. No, no, oh, it's it just a, it's just a substitute for cow's milk. Oh, okay. Yeah, it it has it has good nutrition. It has the same amount of calcium, uh, vitamin D, and but it's it is lower in calories. If calories are a concern for you, one cup of unsweetened has only thirty calories. One cup of skim is ninety to a hundred. Um, oh, okay. But if you have any problem with um, digesting milk, if you have any problem, like I said before, with sinuses or with mucus in your throat, sometimes cow's milk could exacerbate that problem, make it a little bit worse. Um, so those kind of times, it's nice to go with a, a nut one as well. And the beautiful thing about these two is there are some that are shelf stable, that they come in that aseptic packaging that you, know, you could keep in your pantry. Okay. So when you do run out of milk, you have that too. Um, so just another option. Okay, so I put my banana in and we're gonna use a little bit of an avocado here. Let me grab my knife, sorry about that. I just washed it. And of course, you remember, I don't, um, you seem like you're fairly new to the program and I've talked before about um, when we're using um, things like avocado, you always wanna make sure that you wash it because you could be introducing bacteria if you don't. Sometimes people forget about that. Um, and this looks like a nice one. Beautiful, it's perfect. Yeah. And we're just gonna stick that in there. And there's a, um, a store around here, a restaurant rather, and they are known for their milkshakes and how creamy they are. And one time I made somebody one with this avocado. They're like, oh my gosh, it tastes like a such and such milkshake. It's because it's so oh, creamy. Okay. From that. Um, and we're gonna do that. And then we're going to add our Let's see, avocado. We're also going to add our, we're going to add almond butter to this one. And um, I've never a, had or used almond butter. Okay. And you don't have to, you could definitely leave this out too. Is that a powder or is that a? This one is uh, just like the peanut butter. Oh, okay. And you could use peanut butter in this in, instead too. Okay. And this one also calls for two dates. And I don't know if you use dates in your cooking at all or your baking. Mm -hmm. No, a great I have. Way to, yeah, a great way to add a little bit of fiber and, um, and sweetness without adding sugar. And I forgot my cocoa. Hold on one sec. Thought I had my cocoa sitting out here. <clears throat> Sorry about that. And you could just do a tablespoon of, um, Cocoa powder. I like oh, what, I'm sorry. What'd what you say? Did you, what did you use? A tablespoon of unsweetened cocoa powder. Oh, okay. Just to give it that chocolatey taste. And I'm also going to add chia seeds. I don't know if you're familiar with chia seeds. No. Um, they're just, um, it's a little seed on, you've probably heard of flax seeds. Um, chia seeds are a little bit different. They, um, they're used to as like a topping for yogurt. You could make a, they have like this quality whenever they get wet, they kind of form a little bit of a gel. So um, there's people that make pudding out of these and the nutritional thing, the nutritional content of it is them. They're an excellent source of the omega-3 fatty acids. So the, the omega-3 fatty acids, so good for our brain health, our cardiovascular health. And, you know, that's people take the fish oil tabs. It's found in the fatty fish, the sardines, the, the tuna, mackerel, et cetera. What, what other one? Tuna, mackerel, sardines, and salmon, and herring. And those are a very good source of them, of the omega-3 fatty acids. You could also take a fish oil tab, but there's some plant sources that have them as well. And a tablespoon of chia seeds contains about 2,500 milligram of the omega-3 fatty acids. So it's just really good. They, like I said, they don't change the taste. Um, 
if you ever try them, like I said, I have a huge box of them, but they do come in smaller bags. Um, but it's so nice. You can to put them like on a salad or. Um, um, you can put them on a salad instead of poppy seeds or something like that. Um, you could put them, they're nice on your yogurt. They add a little bit of crunch, um, cereal. There's, there's a lot of things that you could, but salad, you're right. That is nice. That is a good idea. Okay. And we're just going to put them in here again, not going to change our taste too much. And that is all we have in that one. And we'll get that to stir. So you can get those in the grocery store also, correct? The chia, chia seeds. What? You can get them in a grocery store. Yes, any grocery store around here, small packages, even the Target and the um, and Walmart have them too. Now this came out a little bit thick and that's because of the, um, the avocado. So this one is very thick and we could have just added more milk, but that does have that, that's nice and chocolatey. I don't know if you could see how nice and smells delicious too. Now, did, what does, does, do you taste the avocado in that? No. Not at all, not at all. I would have never thought of putting avocado in a, in a smoothie. I know, right? Um, but it's just, I think it's one of those things that just lends itself to other flavors. And I think the chocolate and like I said, the dates, you know, since we're using the unsweetened cocoa powder, it's not gonna give it that sweet chocolate taste. That's why we use the dates. The dates are gonna give it that sweetness. And you know, the dates again, add a lot of fiber, fantastic. Um, the goal for fibers around 25 um, grams a day. It's really hard to get that. Uh, the best way to get that is um, avocados are an excellent source of fiber. So that little serving that we had there, probably a third of the avocado probably had close to eight grams of fiber in it. Um, raspberries, blackberries, blue, uh, raspberries and blackberries are probably a very high too, about eight grams per cup. That's another good source. The dates, uh, I have my bag right here, three grams for okay. five pieces. And really it's, you know, that doesn't sound like much, but like broccoli, cauliflower, green beans, you get, a, you know, anywhere from one to four grams per serving. So these are all really good servings. Um, you know, nice to keep. Again, these are something else that could go in the pantry. Nice to have on hand. Um, and avocado, avocado turns brown so quickly, yes? I really it like it, but I hardly ever buy it because uh, my husband won't eat it. And um, it just seems like if you cut it, it just turns brown really quick. <laughs> exactly. So if you're the only one at home that eats it, I would recommend after you cut it um, to right now, before you put it in the refrigerator, you could put it in like this. We could take out the stone either way. Um, put some lemon juice, some fresh lemon juice all over it and then stick it in the bag and it should stay nice and green for you. Um, the same as if you were making guacamole and um, say you make it in the afternoon and you're, you're not eating it till later in the day, you would want to make sure that you put some lemon juice on it and then press your uh, uh, plastic wrap right on top of it, the surface, oh, okay. so no air gets to it. Same with okay. this. And this could be, also, you could take this and if you're the only one at home that eats it and it takes a while to eat all of this, you could mash it up and put the lemon juice on it and stick it into a freezer bag and stick it in the freezer. It'll freeze very nice for you. Oh, okay. um, another, another great way to use them. Yeah, because they're so expensive. Um, you don't want it, That's it's frustrating when you throw them away or when you finally open it and it has like some brown spots on it. It has that little tiny window when it's really, when right. it's ripe, but it's not brown, but it's, you know, still has a good flavor. So, so and did again, you say if you mash it, put a little bit of lemon juice in it also? Okay. Yes. Yeah, okay. absolutely. It'll keep it from going brown. Okay. Yes. Um, and I do that a lot. I'll, um, not even just the freezing, but um, I'll take them in my lunch and maybe somebody else in my family will take them for lunch. So I'll put lemon juice on and by the time I'm ready to eat, it's still nice and, and colorful and it hasn't ox you know, oxidized or anything like that. Yeah, I do so, like them just to cut it up and just a little bit of salt on it and just yes. eat it back. Yeah, excellent I just, source I of fiber. I have bought them for a long time. So. Great, um, excellent source of fiber, good, uh, excellent source of mono and saturated fat. And yeah, you're right. Like, um, 
if you haven't bought them in a long time, like in May, they come from California, but this type of year, like they're coming from Mexico, they're coming from South America, which is still very good. It's an excellent product, but as always, make sure you wash it because how many hands it's touched and how much bacteria is on, you don't want to put it inside because usually we're not cooking these, we're eating them raw. So it's not going to get right. a chance to get killed. Um, right. Any bacteria is what I mean. Um, okay. Switch gears. Our next one is a, um, a tropical citrus smoothie. So this one, I'm going to use coconut milk. And coconut milk is also very nice. Uh, and let me see this one for calcium. Again, 460 milligrams. So another great source of calcium. Something different. It has that good coconut taste. Gives you a little bit of a, um, you know, that tropical taste that we're looking for in this one. And now is and that unsweetened also? This is also unsweetened. And let me tell you, this one is 40 calories. Our almond was 30 calories. Not, I mean, that does not even a big difference. This one has a little bit of fat in it, obviously, because coconuts do. Um, coconuts also have the monounsaturated fat, one carb, zero sugars, no protein. Um, but it is, yeah, you know, like, we had, we said it was a good source of calcium. And what was your other question about sugar? Does it have any sugar in it? Yeah, zero sugar. Okay. Um, no added sugars. Uh, let's see, coconut milk, vitamin and mineral blend. That's all. So with yeah. My, uh, with my ulcerative colitis, um, artificial sweeteners really bother yes. my colitis. Yes. So um, that's why I'd asked about the artificial sweeteners. Oh no, I, I think that's, it's always a good idea to keep that, um, to know they can cause a lot of gas and bloating and, and stomach upset. So right. I agree with you. Right. Um, okay, so this one, we're gonna do again, eight ounces of milk. And this one too, it's a little bit, uh, coconut milk has a little bit of a creamy texture, which is nice um, if you're looking for that. And there's a lot of good recipes on um, sometimes on the container, sometimes on the coconut milk website. Um, there's some for like different puddings that you can make. It's just a nice product. Um, and again, you know, dairy free, gluten free. So a nice product to have. And if you, um, I don't know if, if gluten causes you any problem with your. No. Okay. No, it's All right. So we we'll do our, our um, coconut milk. And then we're going to add some pineapple chunks. And again, these could have been frozen. I did not freeze mine, I just cut it this morning. And we're going to add about a half cup. I'm just gonna put it in here to get an idea. Half cup of coconut. Okay. And I have a mango, and you might like this one too. Um, it might be, you I know, love nice mango, yeah. <laughs> I love it too. And you know what I love about this one? I make this one for my kids a lot when we're talking about keeping things colorful. This comes out to be the most beautiful color of yellow. Okay. And um, I think it's really appetizing. And I'm going to add a little bit of ice this one to this one instead of the frozen banana. And we will give that a whirl. Yes, I love, look at that. I don't know. Oh, yeah. That yellow. I so, like that blender because you can make it and, and you have it like right there. This thing is so, yes. is so heavy to wash. Right. And, you know, when you take your drink, it's only like up to about here. So. I know, I know. You're right. You're right. Like, if I do have this, you know, you could use either one, but you're right. I, I probably use this once, I don't know. Right. Every hundred times that I use this one. And what's nice about these ones, Barbara, is they came with a, um, so the blade screws right on there, but there's also a lid that goes on here. So if I want to take it with me when I leave the house, I could just, you know, oh, I have it. That's cool. Out. But it yeah. comes with that great big unit. Yes. Yes. This is the, um, the Ninja. Okay. Yeah. But I do like it too. And, like, and for the reasons that you said. 
but yeah, let's pour this one out. So again, just something nice and, and like that yellow just makes me happy. <laughs> Just that funny. looks really good. I love pineapple and I love mango and banana. Yeah. It sounds really good. <laughs> yeah, this is a nice one. Nice one. And it's not too sweet. It's only going to be as sweet as what you, um, uh, you know, your mango and everything and your pineapple. But the other thing I like about this one is it does have that, you know, with the coconut milk, it kind of does have that tropical, you know, smell to it. Like that mm -hmm. vacation smell. <laughs> so that's a nice one. Okay, and of course, our next one I had to do with, you know, right now everything's pumpkin, so I made a pumpkin one. Um, and where's my cup right here? And I, I did this one, I was fooling around with this recipe last year, everybody was talking about like, um, you know, all the coffee shops, oh, pumpkin spice this and pumpkin spice that, and I'm like, eh. Don't know if I like that, but I do like pumpkin. And um, I thought, yeah, I I'll do just, too. Yeah, I'll just make my own little smoothie for that. So again, a cup of milk. And then this one, we're going to add some pumpkin puree right out of the can, make sure you don't use the one that is, I don't know if I have my can or I think I put it in the refrigerator. Um, you don't want to use the one that's pumpkin pie filling. You just want straight pumpkin puree. Okay. And add in. How much of that? One third cup. Okay. And I am going to use a frozen banana in this one, just to give it a little bit of thickness. You don't need that much. I'll use a small piece. Okay. I have all kinds of different size chunks in mine. And you can add, it depends now what you'd like to do. I have nutmeg and cinnamon. And I'm also to this one, I'm going to, you know how you were talking about your protein drinks? I'm gonna add a little bit of a commercial protein powder that I have to this one, just to make it a higher protein one. And it's just a scoop of vanilla protein powder. And what that does, like the other ones we added yogurt to, this also adds about 20 grams of protein um, to this as well. And it adds- how much, little, of, how much of that did you use? I used one scoop. One scoop. And that should be all you need for those. And you could get those, you could get those anywhere too. You could get them at the grocery store. You could get them Target. You just want a simple vanilla um, protein powder. Um, and you, there's plant-based ones, there's whey-based ones. But what you're looking for, typically they have 20 grams of protein per serving. So it's an excellent way to get your protein. They have a very nice protein, uh, a very nice amino acid and, um, other vitamin um, profile. So you're getting a lot for your for your buck in there. Okay, okay, so almond milk, the pumpkin puree, I have our banana. Okay, this is what I started to say. It depends on how much nutmeg and um, cinnamon you like. I like to put a good bit of cinnamon in mine, probably, I'm gonna say a half teaspoon. And I'm just gonna put that right in there. And you might want to experiment, you know, maybe that's overwhelming or it makes it too spicy. And nutmeg, I usually just do um, a few shakes. <laughs> yep, a few little things. Okay. And you, you could do this on top when you're done too, but I, I really like when the whole thing is mixed together. Mm -hmm. But again, either. Mm -hmm. and my blade nice and clean. Yeah, this is one of my favorites. I love doing this one. Yeah, it sounds really good too. Yeah. And I, again, can use, I can see you use a lot of bananas. <laughs> so this one's a nice orange color. Let me see if I have another nice clear glass. Oh yeah. My kids love making their smoothies and put them in these mason jars. And now, can you keep those in the refrigerator for how long? Yes. Yeah, I would say a day, well, I would say a day or two at okay. least. And then you could either um, stir it up or put them in a shaker cup or put them back in your blender if you feel like they've separated. But okay. I think that's mm, that smells, oh, this smells nice and pumpkin-y. And you could also put a little bit more cinnamon on top if you want. 
if you're so inclined, you put a little bit of whipped cream on it too, or something just to make it fancy okay. for yourself as a little treat. This one, so, you know, this one might be, you know, you could enjoy any of these anytime. I don't know. Right. If you could, right. Um, okay. But some have a little bit more dessert kind of flair to them, like the chocolate or the pumpkin. The other ones might, you know, the, the mango, um, the mango, uh, what is the other thing that we had in there? Pineapple, that might be better, like some, it's a little bit lighter. So if you don't want something so filling, obviously, you know, this um, chocolate one was a little bit more filling. Right. And then um, I'll also make sure you get some other ones. I had mentioned ginger um, and, and I have some here today, but I didn't know if we would have enough time to make it. It's um, one that has celery, ginger, and it's like, a, it's a lot lighter and it could be really good on your stomach too. Um, Ginger is um, an anti-inflammatory and it could also um, settle your stomach if you have anything like that. So I'll make sure I get all these recipes to you. Oh, okay. easy. And you could experiment with all of them too. Maybe you want to add more milk. Maybe you want to add, you know, more yogurt or something else to make it thick. So you have a couple options to make it thick. The yogurt, frozen fruit, frozen banana especially is going to make it thick. Um, avocado. Um, you have the liquids, you have things to make it colorful you know, to make sure that, you know, you, it's, it's appetite, it's appetite stimulating mm -hmm. uh, to have those different colors. Um, what else did you have, Barbara? My husband and I used to make a carrot, liquid carrot drink. Yes. We had a, we had a special machine that it, uh, it was a juicer. It was called juicer. a juicer. Yeah. Um, so you, you know, do the carrots and then we put in apples or strawberries or whatever we did that for quite a while and then we kind of got away from it but that was actually fairly tasty people used to say oh carrots liquid carrots it sounds awful right um but it was we did that for quite a while yeah so you still it have amazing. it i'm sorry you still have your juicer no it, it kind of quit working and we had to get rid of it but um it, it was amazing how much now, maybe this wasn't a good thing. How much of the pulp from the carrot was left? Like after you, you ground, you know, you ground it right. up. Cause I don't think you could do a carrot in a, in a blender. I don't think you can either. Yeah. Unless, unless you cooked it a little bit, you could possibly right. I guess, make it a little softer, but right. um, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't bad. So, but prior um, to, prior to all these medical problems, I, I never really, did you did juicing um, or did yeah so yeah, yeah I think some, juicing is good too yeah uh, so um, yeah so that, that, that gives me a lot of options to uh, to work with so yeah and I'll make um, sure you get the recipes now I had bought um, the when they ordered me my high protein drink they also said. I could get like boost or something like that. Can you incorporate that into these Absolutely. smoothies? Absolutely. There's um you could use boost. Um, there is another product, you know, all these you could find when you had mentioned coffee before. There's a lot of flavors. There's another <clears throat> um, there's another one, it's called Premier Protein. It's at all the drugstores, it's at Walmart Target, all of those. Um, it's probably what right near the, what was the name of it? Premier protein. Premier protein. Okay. And it's it comes in like this. I think the same kind of container boost, almost like a cardboard, like a like a juice box, like a, a cardboard that's box. That's how my that's how my drink comes. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. And there's so many different flavors. I have a lot of clients that like to use. Um, there is a, a mocha flavored one, or um, what would other that other be? Um, maybe like a caramel macchiato flavor. Um, that people like to use and they'll add different things to it in place of their morning coffee. Um, it's a, it, those are excellent too. Those, and I think the boost as well, around 30 grams of protein. So that's really- Yeah, I, the boost I bought, hold on one second. <clears throat> sure. It has, it's, uh, let's see. It says 100% more protein. It's 20 grams of protein. Okay. Um, and the only thing they had was vanilla. Okay. Very vanilla. <laughs> so but that's yeah. the product. Oh, good. Yeah. What does it say? I see the 20. What is that 27 underneath? Vitamins and minerals. 
Oh, excellent. Good. Good. And then it says 25% less sugar. So let okay. me see how much sugar it has. It has 11 grams of sugar per bottle, probably. which is probably eight ounces, I guess. Yeah. Probably one of those. That's, yeah. That's not too bad. No, um, no, not at all. So and anyway, they only, they only gave me like 10 of the, um, the protein drinks that they wanted me to drink two a day for five days. Okay. So, uh, and then was that a certain up, brand? It's, let me see. It's called impact. Oh, excellent. Okay, good. You familiar with that? It's, um, Actually, it's 20 grams of, oh no, 20 grams of carbohydrate. Okay. Um, let me see how much protein's in here. Protein, 26. Excellent. Good. Um, and this is, this is eight, this is eight out, well, eight and a half ounces. Okay. So, so what, uh, uh, probably over 200 calories. Uh, let's see, 250. Good. Good. 250 calories. So um, it looks like it's made by Nestle. 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 Mm -hmm. so. Yes. Yeah. They make a lot of um, supplements like that. That's good. Um, no, those are good. And, and like they come with the straw. Sometimes it might be easier to just sip on that. Um, and that, I think those are good. Even if you have more, if you're not up to making a smoothie, at least you have one of those that's convenient. You're still getting a good mm -hmm. amount of protein and calories. I think that's a good idea. Um, right. And if, you know, you're going to have to um, judge by your appetite and your energy level. Um, you may want to have them in between meals as a snack as, you know, so it doesn't displace your meal if you're able to, you know, take a full meal. So you're going to have to play. Yeah, I was going to say that the first day I took it in the morning, it was so filling. I wasn't able to eat anything for breakfast. because I was Right. Really so, right. Um, so I think I've adjusted to it a little bit. Right. Um, I had lost like seven or eight pounds, I guess. And because um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I had surgery August 20th, and now I'm having more surgery. So that's why they gave me this to try to yes. increase my protein and whatever. So. Right. Now, yeah, you may find that, um, you know, depending on how many they want you to drink per day, you may find that, you know, maybe a half serving between meals, maybe you could get more of it in, you know, without if you're, you know, if you still um, enjoy your other meals, you know, so you don't displace those, um, you know, it could be a good in between meal it could be a good thing before you go to bed, it might be a nice, you know, especially with some of those other ones um, that you're mentioning to me the boost and, and, or the premier proteins, there's so many different flavors, um, and so many different things you could do. And then you could always, of course, make your own with whatever you have yeah. on hand. So well, you could actually start with the boost also, could you and then add yes. Yes. Add berries and, you know, yeah. peanut butter or whatever to that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. I think that's okay. a good idea. All right. And, all right, Barbara. It was so nice to meet you. It was nice meeting you too. And um, yeah, these, some of these, well, actually all of them sound good. I'll just have to go out and get some um, ingredients. So <laughs> yeah. and it, like I said, a lot of those could be frozen. Um, a lot of those could be in your pantry. So, you know, you don't have to worry about keeping the fresh stuff on hand all the time or, you know, like um, you, you could freeze a lot of those things, like especially like when the fruits in season, like May, you know, when the strawberries are in, it's a good time to stock up, get a couple extra, freeze them. Bananas, you could do that all the time. You know, they're always reasonable. Well, I, you know, I end up throwing so many bananas away unless I make banana bread. Yes. So, um, in fact, I have three here now that are getting a little, I don't like them. I like them when they're kind of firm. So Thank I'm going to go ahead and peel these and stick them in the freezer. So excellent. Good. That's a good yeah. idea. Yeah. Just when, um, lay, if you have a flat spot in your freezer, you know, lay them, lay them like this and stick them, you know, try to lay them flat and then, you know, break them apart if they stick together and then they should be fine for you. You know, okay. if you, if you, right. if they are that ripe, they might want to stick together. So try to like, let them, you know, freeze. Oh, okay. And, you know what I mean? Okay. Uh, so that's not one big clump and you could get, the, you could get one apart if you need to. Okay. All right. Well, thank right. you very much. I appreciate it. I hope everything goes well tomorrow. So nice to meet you.
Nice to meet you too. Thank you. Have a good day. Oh, bye. bye, Laura. Bye, Barbara. Well, that was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Is there stuff there that you'll make, huh? Yeah, I think um, a couple things she used that um. The problem with the Zoom call was her end, by the way. There's a cocoa powder, it's sugarless, that you can use to make the stuff chocolatey without adding more oh, sugar. sugar to it. Um, the wondering, she used pineapple and mango. Used a lot of frozen bananas. Uh, I'm gonna put these in the freezer. Frozen bananas. Mm -hmm. She said they, um, Pulverized better than top than the uh, unfrozen. Oh, yeah. Then it would get brown when you do that, I guess. Yeah. Hmm. That's cool. Use cinnamon, nutmeg, um, pumpkin. She made one with pumpkin puree. Uh, I'm going to take a nap. Do you have me a tissue, please? Yeah. Well, Okay, I'm probably going to need you at 2.15 to get online with that lady. Yeah.
Katie asked me, did you hear what I said? Katie asked me what it was going to be for and, uh, Halloween. I told her the grumpy old man in the neighborhood. <laughs> Sounds like she met this guy on Facebook. I heard her tell her other clients. Oh, yeah. I mean, she had so many boyfriends and usually they only lasted a couple weeks and she said no that's he's not for me so she met this guy on facebook and he has a he has a six-year-old yeah yeah i heard she said he's all redheads he likes redheads as a little boy is or a boyfriend the boyfriend um, I mean, the sun made me too. I didn't hear her say that. Thank <laughs> you.
There. Too cold. This food all heated up really well. Oh, right. 